Ten years ago, I worked on a biodiversity conservation project in Western Mongolia, and I entertained myself at times watching the white-bellied dippers that spent the cold winters on little streams that rise from hot springs just outside Hoft city. There are five species of dipper in the world. The white-bellied dipper is one of 11 or so subspecies of the white-throated dipper, and it occurs from Afghanistan to Siberia, including parts of Mongolia, where it is known as the Hartzlai. I studied the behavior of the UK subspecies in Shropshire as a schoolboy, and I was struck by the contrast in winter living conditions between the UK and Mongolia. I was keen to see how nesting might differ between the two subspecies. I looked at the literature, asked ornithologists and local people, and kept my eyes open during summer fieldwork in the Altai. All in vain, although I read of summer sightings near Bulgan in southern Hovd province in 2013. And then, in 2016, Gombobatra of the National University of Mongolia sent me a photograph of a dipper with a leaf in its beak. He had taken it that May on the Winch River in the southern Altai. A year later to the day, I was there with Enkbat and Batbayr, tents and food for two weeks, and determination to find Harzlai nests. We found dippers almost immediately, and on the second day we even found a nest in the early stages of construction, largely from grass roots and moss. It was a rather precarious site, just one meter above the water, among grass roots on an eroded stream bank prone to flooding and the antics of passing yaks. The choice of sites surprised me. Rock faces and ledges, common sites in Europe, were available, although most of them perhaps not near enough to the water for dippers' tastes. The second nest site I found was even more surprising, much lower down near the water and apparently at risk of flooding during day-to-day -day fluctuations in water level caused by snow melt. Some of the local people we talked to were familiar with dippers, but they did not know where they nested. Others seemed to confuse the dipper with the common sandpiper, which was also frequent in the area. Maksajav, here on the horse, told us that dippers wintered locally on streams and springs that did not freeze over. We observed two pairs at their nests, and as far as we could tell, only one individual of each pair collected nesting material or built. The other was either absent or bobbed up and down on a rock nearby. Note the blinking of the white feathered eyelids on each bobbing movement. Partners frequently interacted. The non-builder sometimes flew up and down in front of the nest. At times, whether alone or with their partner, dippers flicked their wings and curtsied. And they sang on occasion, usually when alone. Most nest building took place in the early morning, before the sun was on the nest. And for the rest of the day, the dippers were usually very hard to find. On some mornings, only one dipper arrived and just waited at the nest site, sometimes picking up nesting material, but not doing any building. On one morning, neither bird arrived, but they had not deserted, and they came the next day. The nest builder often picked up a small item from the bottom of the nest and jumped into the water with it. This time, he or she seemed to abort jumping, but took another item and jumped in a few seconds later. Preening is very important for the aquatic lifestyle. Dippers have a large oil gland at the base of the tail. Look at the way they move easily in and out of the water. When looking for dippers, it's often the fast flight 
accompanied by a zit call that alerts one to their presence. After a week in Winch, we looked for more breeding sites to the north and the east. We found none, although local people in Munkharken gave convincing reports of dipper sightings. We used a hand net to sample the aquatic invertebrate fauna wherever we went. The nesting stream was the only one with caddisfly larvae and it also had the highest abundance of mayfly and stonefly larvae. Dippers are excellent indicators of water quality and so of chemical and sediment pollution. I find dippers and their natural surroundings particularly attractive aesthetically. And I'm not the only one. Our team became real dipper fans during the three weeks we were in the field. It would be nice to return to Hardsly country to find out more about their breeding and how gradient, altitude, snow melt, livestock density and water quality affect both breeding range and timing.